So you've already run some tests. You ran the tests last week. Um, those were probably the most hardcore tests you'll actually run, but it doesn't really matter to you because you don't see how they work. They just run in the background doing things. So the tests that we're dealing with here, test-driven development or test-driven design, is a pretty common and well-debated model of how to do things in the programming world. Um, the idea is that you run the test before you've done anything. You, or in most cases when you're actually working, you write the test before you've done anything. And then you write code to pass the test. And so in your case last week, the code that passed the test was print hello world. And then when you ran the test, the test came back green, right? It passed. Now, once it's green, you know it's functionally correct, but it might still be pretty clunky. And so the thing that you want to do then is refactor it. And refactor it just means clean it up, make it a bit better. And so the nice thing about having a green test is that every time that you make a little change, you can still run the test and see if it's still green and you haven't made any mistakes. Now this, for a little bit of code, like just printing hello world is, is a complete overkill. But sometimes when you've got a very complex bit of code, you want to make sure that you haven't made mistakes, haven't caused mistakes elsewhere in your system. So it's super useful. So we write a failing test, we do whatever it takes to pass the test, and then we can tidy up the mess without changing the functionality. So in this case, um, we've got a very simple function up here. We're going to add A and B together. and we're gonna, we've got a little test harness, I guess. Normally you'd use a test system of some sort, um, but this just basically does the job. So what we're gonna say is we've got the arguments, we've got the functions called test adding, which takes an argument of a number, another number, and the result. And then we call that function. We use the word calling the function three times down here. So we're expecting Two, we're, we're giving it two and two, and we're expecting four, okay? So when we add two and two, we get four, okay? Then we're gonna add one and three, and we get four. Okay, that's cool. It's pr still printing, oh yes. And then we're gonna add four and zero, and we get four, and that's still printing, oh yes. Now, the problem we've got here is this function just returns four. Now, currently, the way that the tests are written, that's great, it does the job. We don't need it to be any more complicated than that. And so this is one of the sort of fun things about um, test-driven stuff is that you only need to do as much work as you need to do. But if we add another test, so we add four and four and get eight, that will fail because it's gonna give us four. We're expecting eight, but we're getting four. Um, and then we get something like this, right? Which is bad. Um, you have, got little tests like this in exercise zero and in exercise three, I think it's three, yeah, um, which are really helpful for running the debugger. They're not the tests, they're just mini tests, okay? And those mini tests will trigger your code so that you can use the debugger. Um, it's sometimes a bit confusing between the tests and the mini tests. The mini tests are just there to help you while you're working. The big tests are there to make sure that your work is kind of correct. Okay, um, you'll get used to it sooner or later. And so what happens if we have this other test here where we say, give me the string six and the string nine and I expect 15. Um, the whole thing will just break because it's not ready to, it doesn't understand how to handle, I mean, it doesn't do any adding at all, but can it handle a string which is not actually a real number? And so this is where it gets interesting. You add the nuance, you add the layers of difficulty to your code. And then if you come up with a problem in real life, you just add a test. And so a lot of my code has tons of tests which are just weird situations that came up in real life that we then fixed.